Good afternoon and welcome to Mr. Stanier's Chess Academy Expert Course Lesson 1. Um, I'm assuming that you've played quite a few games of chess, that you're very secure with the rules of chess, you understand checkmate, you understand castling, you understand all of those fundamental ideas of chess. Um, what we're going to do over the, uh, during this course is we're going to uh, improve our chess by looking at the three different aspects of the game. So there, there are three parts of any game of, game of chess. There's the opening game, uh, the opening part of the game. There is the middle game, um, when uh, pieces start being exchanged and the, the bloodletting starts happening. And then there's the end game, when the battlefield is almost fully cleared and you've only got a few pieces less on, left on the board. And those three parts of the game require three different uh, skills from the chess player. So the opening game is really about memorization and learning um, openings and learning what openings to do in response to your, your opponent's openings. The middle game is more to do with your creative thinking and your problem solving skills. So you need to think about developing our strategic skills and our tactical thinking. And we do that really through looking at past games and by um, looking at chess puzzles. And then you've got the end game, where if you learn um, some rules and if you w learn a little bit of theory, then it will give you an, uh, an edge during the end game against opponents who might not have taken their time to learn this theory. So each of these lessons um, for this course will um, cover those three aspects. We'll talk a little bit about opening theory, a little bit about middle game theory, a little bit about end game theory um, in each session. So in today's session, we're going to look at um, the, the, the fundamental ideas uh, behind opening theory, and we'll look at a couple of openings for white, which illustrate these, these theories. We will have a look at um, a little bit of end game um, thinking and looking at how we can get checkmate with just a king and a pawn. And then um, we'll talk about chess puzzles and how to improve our brains to better handle the middle game. Okay. So we'll start by talking about opening theory. So um, on the chessboard, the, the most important squares in the chessboard, as they would be uh, on a battlefield, is, uh, is the middle of the battlefield, the middle of the chessboard. So if we, uh, so these four central squares are the, are the key to the battle, really. If we can, if we can capture these squares then, um, and, and hold these squares, then it gives us a significant, a significant advantage. But also the squares surrounding these central squares are really important as well. So if we can um, put some claim to these squares or put pressure on any of these squares, the more the better. So that's, uh, that's idea one in thinking about openings, is to try and control these central squares. And that's why lots of chess players have this opening here, um, which is the pawn to e4 because it's taking control of one of the central squares, it's putting pressure on another central square, and it's putting pressure on one of these outer central squares, which are also very important. The other uh, key idea in openings is to get your uh, soldiers out into the battlefield as quickly as possible, to mobilize your troops, to get your pieces out. And the ones that we need to move out, first of all, are our minor pieces. So these are our bishops and our knights, which again is why this move here, pawn to king, uh, in old money, pawn to king four, but uh, pawn to e4, um, is, is such a great thing because not only does it cover the cent these central squares, but also it allows this bishop to come out. So it opens up um, that diagonal there. Um, so, so uh, you know, really important idea, get these pieces out as quickly as possible. The third idea uh, for openings is to, as quickly as you possibly can, to castle, to get your king away from the centre, which is where um, a lot of the action is going to happen in the early and the middle games, and to put, it to one, put the king to one side so he's safely tucked away um, and isn't exposed to any immediate danger. So being able to castle as quickly as possible is an important part of your opening thinking as well. Okay, so control the center is the first thing we're gonna try and do. Second thing we're gonna do is gonna try and develop our minor pieces. And the third thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try and castle as soon as possible. 
So I'm going to show you two openings now, which um, which illustrate this. And these are two openings for whites. Now, so with openings, you need to try and memorize them. So well, I'll show you them here on the video on this video. Um, but then ideally, what you need to do is you need to get a chessboard out yourself, and you just need to repeat doing them again and again and again and again and again. And the idea with that is that when you start a game of chess. Um, you don't want to have too much going on in your brain initially because you it's quite mentally demanding a game of chess isn't it so if you can have these uh, openings in your back pocket then it means that you can just roll them out um, and you don't have to put too much uh, thinking into that opening game um, and, and burn yourself out too quickly so so really do memorize these so the first one i'm going to show you is um called the italian opening or uh, in Italian, it's called the gioco piano, or the kind of the quiet game. And it starts with white play, and, and play this by the way if you're white, not if you're black. We'll look at some black openings next time. So white plays the pawn, the king's pawn, to e4. As I showed you, and we know why that's a good move because it covers the central squares. Um, uh, and and black usually thinks, well, actually, I don't want the white pawn climbing up the board because we know that if we do that, we can get a queen if we get to the end. So black usually blocks that pawn there. And this is a good move for black as well, isn't it? Because they're taking a central square and they're putting pressure on those squares as well. The next move in the Italian opening is for the knight to come out. Now, this is clearly a good move because we are putting pressure on this pawn here. We can take it next move. We're also putting pressure on this square here, which the black pawn is laying claim to, but the, the knight is saying, well, actually, um, I, I, I'm going to put some pressure on that square as well. Uh, and, and the knight's sitting in one of these outer central squares. So we can see that that is, uh, that is a, a, a good sound opening move. It's also meeting criteria two, of our things to do in the opening in getting a minor piece out and it's also meeting criteria three as well because um, it is means it's one piece gone from uh, needing to castle so we need to move both these pieces out to castle of course so black usually in this situation looks goes oh no this this pawn on e 5s in danger i'm going to protect it and the way they usually protect it is to move um, the knight here to c6. Another move that they might do is this pawn move here to d6. So both moves are protecting this pawn on e5. Um, whatever black do in this situation, if they, if they move the knight or if they move the pawn, you can still carry on with the Italian opening. Um, and and this, is, this is the key motif of the Italian opening. It's the thing that, that defines it is not that a, a, a black knight just appears out of nowhere, thank you very much computer, we'll put the, the bishop back there, um, is that the bishop comes onto this square here onto c4. And we can see that this is, uh, this is a, good, a good move in the opening because it is putting more pressure, more control onto this square d5, which is a central square. But more importantly, opens up this diagonal here and he's putting pressure on the weakest pawn that the black player has on f7. So you'll see that all of these pawns, so this pawn here on a7 is, is defended by the um, rook, this pawn here is defended by the bishop, um, this pawn here is defended by the queen, and, and so on. So all these pawns are really well defended, apart from the one on f7, it's only protected by the king. So this move here, even though you know the, the, the bishop isn't going to take the pawn on f7 um, because the king will just take it back, it's putting pressure on it. Um, it also is meeting the second criteria of our good opening, is that it's moving a minor piece out. And it's meeting criteria three of next move, if we wanted to. Next move, I'll just put my king back. Oh, computer, what are you doing? So next move, if, if we wanted to, we could we could castle. Hmm. So there we are. That is that is the Italian opening. Okay, and 
as I said before the idea is that you learn this off by heart so you sit down in chessboard and go okay then black will do this and what's the next move hopefully you've said it's the knight there Mr Stania um, and then black will usually do this and then the bishop goes here to c4 and that's the Italian opening very handy very good to remember it can lead to all sorts of um, wonderful things for um, for white a, a common one is if black do that with their knight with their knight to f5 attacking this pawn here then you can move your knight here and they might think oh look they've made a mistake I'll take that but then you can do this which is called the fried liver attack is you can take this pawn here Kind, king can't take but you've got a fork here a fork on uh, the uh, queen and the rook the queen will probably move out and then you've got a, a free rook there so um so it's a very it's a, it's a it's a very powerful opening which leads to lots of options the uh second um opening i'm going to show you is not is called the spanish opening or the Roy Lopez or Roy Lopez, I think, um, opening. And again, this is an opening for white. So it proceeds initially very much like the Italian opening. So it's uh, pawn to e4. Black will probably respond like this. You move your knight to uh, f3. Black will probably respond by going c6. And now you move your bishop. So if I move my bishop to c4, it would be the Italian opening. But I'm going to move my bishop to b5. And that, in a nutshell, is the Spanish or Roy Lopez opening. Now, the key idea behind this is that this, this knight here is defending this pawn. So if white were to um, take this pawn, then that knight would just be taken back and say why well, it's not going to do that because it's a pawn for a knight it's not a fair trade so the idea here is, is is that the next move what white is going to do is white is going to take the knight black will take that and then the knight comes and takes this pawn so already white is a is a is a pawn up usually black uh, does something to support that pawn but that's the, the fundamental idea it's putting pressure really early on in the game onto black so we'll just go through that again sorry pawn to e4 d4 moving the knight out usually defended with that knight and then moving in there with the bishop okay so that's the that's the Roy Lopez or the Spanish opening Let's just go back and see if we can remember the um, Italian opening or the Gioco Piano. So just think in your head, looking at the board, what move would I do first? I hope that's easy. E4. Black will do for D5. What do I move next? So I can't hear you. That's right, it's night knight to f3 i'll just put that pawn back to which black will usually do this and now if it's the italian opening the gioco piano the what do i move next yes it's the bishop but where do i put it Pardon? i ho i hope that you uh, that you said c4 here and that's the Italian opening let's just go over the Spanish opening or the Roy Lopez what do I move first of course it's the pawn to e4 and then what do I move next I might sneeze in a second no it's gone it's the knight to f3. 
he usually responded to this and then it's a Spanish opening so I now move of course yes it's the bishop but where to no no it's not c5 sorry c4 it's not c4 that's right it goes to b5 there b5 and that's a spanish opening good so there's two openings for you to learn as i said get the board out uh, have a little practice of them do them um, do them multiple times um, until they're really embedded into your memory um, black might not do these moves you might have to learn a different opening but um, it's a pretty standard opening this for black okay what i want to look at now is to look at now the end game so the end game is when there's been a you know uh, uh, the, the, the when there's only a few pieces left on the board now because you're uh, looking at the expert course i am assuming that you already know how to get checkmate with a king and a queen. If you don't know how to get checkmate with a king and a queen, then please go and find out. So there's plenty of um, uh, videos on YouTube about how to do this. Um, uh, so, so, so do find out, do practice, or just sit down with a board and work it out yourself. But you can get checkmate with a king and a queen. Um, and of course, if you can get checkmate with a king and a queen, then that means that you can get checkmate with a king and a pawn. But only if you can get that pawn to the end of the to the to, to the, the, the final square so you can convert it into a queen. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you some 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 fundamental endgame theory about about how to convert your pawn into a, um, a your pawn into a queen. So here we have a, a common situation. Um, there's been decimation. All of the pieces have been cleared off the board apart from uh, the black and white king and the black pawn. And um, and so. In this situation, you might think as black, you know, oh, I need to get my pawn along to the end as quickly as possible. So, so white might do this move, black might do this, white does this, and so on. Now, if you're in this situation here, we I won't I won't play it out for you, but this will basically end in a draw. The kings will dance around this pawn until the cows come home. And um, and white's not going to make a mistake, and um, and the game will just go on forever, and it will be a stalemate. Because the this is the important the important thing to remember. Okay, and remember this: if it is a king pawn ending, you must get your king in front of the pawn. Okay, you must get your king in front of the pawn. And if you get your king in front of the pawn, you can push the enemy king back, making space for your pawn to proceed royally to the to the finish line and turn into a queen. Okay, so let me demonstrate with this game. So, so if white goes first, the first move black does isn't to start the pawn march, it's to manoeuvre the king in front of the pawn. Like so. And um, and so you want to be in kind of in kind of this position here, okay, with the king in front of the with the king in front of the pawn. Technically, technically, this example I've shown you is a very good example because this position will actually end in a stalemate. But um, but that's the that's the principle. So if this is if this is black's move first, well, just 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 for me, just humour me. It's black moves first, and then. Um, we are we are in this position, and it's and it's black's moves now, um, and then black can can go go like this, and white here you see cannot go on any of these squares, and so um, we'll need to either dance this way or retreat, and uh, oh, thank you computer, and black you know uh, black will will go there, white white might go here. But then we can just um, go check there. If uh, if white go if white goes uh, if white goes here, then all is lost because the um, 
the black pawn can just progress. So white might do that. And now this is important. You need to keep the king in front of the pawn. So don't be tempted to do this because that ended stalemate. So you move the king forward. This king, the white king, can't go here, can't go here, can't go here, can't go here. And again, is pushed back. And you, um, you keep the pawn moving forward like this. Now, when you get to this situation, this is when you know that you have one because the king here is protecting these three landing squares for the black um, pawn. So the black pawn can now royally and regally, whatever um, white does, can just royally and regally end up here and turn into a queen. And we know how to get checkmate with a king and a queen, don't we? Okay. So uh, I'll just I'll just uh, go through that again. I'll sh show you this time um, just with with white this time. So um, in this situation here, so white's first move isn't this? White's first move is to get the king to get the king. in front of the pawn and then begin to um, push the black king back and then it's quite safe now to move the pawn and at this point we can now move the king here protecting these three landing squares um, and uh, it's uh, it's a white victory because now the the king the, the pawn can royally romp home okay so key end game strategy king pawn ending get your king in front of the pawn and push the opponent's king back and as you put as you proceed up the board never let your pawn overtake your king until you get until the king gets to the seventh row okay good so again get a chess board out practice it you know if you've got something to play chess against practice don't play the whole game just play king for ending do it several times repeat it several times and um, to see if you can actually make sure you're getting a victory every time and the key point to this the key point to this as well is that if you can get victory with just a king and a pawn that's just that's just one point that's just one piece. So this is why every single piece you have is so valuable and every single pawn is so valuable because that one pawn that you might just throw away, you think, oh, it's only a pawn, it's not worth as much as a bishop or a knight. That one pawn is the thing, is the piece that might bring you ultimate victory. Okay, so protect every piece, protect your pawns because they might be your key to victory after all the bloodshed's gone. Okay, I'm now going to talk um, very quickly about middle games. So we've we've, we've talked about um, a lot about the openings and the end games. So in that in a middle game of chess, after uh, you know after all the opening theory has been learnt and you've and you've managed to put your pieces into into different positions, it's then that we begin to think about um, uh, the middle game and to think about strategy and tactics. Now, um, what we're going to do in, in, in future lessons is to think about some key strategic ideas uh, that, that there are in chess, things you might want to think about achieving in the middle game. Um, and when we talk about strategy, we're thinking about things like, um, should I send should I center all of my pieces into the middle and launch a massive attack in the middle? That's kind of strategic thinking. Should I attack on the right hand side? Should I attack on the left hand side? Should I be looking to try and get a, a knight somewhere far up the board to create like an offensive outpost? So these general ideas of what we want to achieve in future moves is what we think about as strategic thinking.
We then have tactical thinking. So tactical thinking is when we're thinking about combinations on the board. So we're thinking, actually, if I take this, will he take that? And then I'll take this, he'll take that. Oh, and then I can put that, and yes, then that's checkmate. Or, or oh, I can get a fork there. So it's working out combinations of moves and combinations of possibilities to, um, to see if, uh, if you can um, outwit your opponent. Now, really, where a good chess player beats a uh, kind of an average chess player is over their tactical thinking. Two players can learn openings, they can learn in-game theory, they can think strategically, but it's in that tactical thinking that quite often, you know, when when sort of, you know, usual non-championship chess players play each other, that's where uh, victory is won or lost. So this 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 tactical thinking is a is a really important part of uh, of your chess development. And the only way really to develop this tactical thinking, because the situations that you're going to find are, you know, there are billions of different possibilities in chess. So you can't learn by rote um, some, you know, what to what to what to do in certain situations in the game. But you can get used to certain types of situations and certain types of patterns, and you get your brain used to these by doing lots and lots of chess puzzles, by looking at situations from past games or situations made up by um, ex chess players. Of course, made up by chess players, and thinking, can I solve this? Can I think about what the solution to this problem is? And it's that chess thinking that really helps you out in the middle game. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, attach to to the one to one note. Um, some chess puzzles for you to get your teeth into and pe begin to start thinking tactically. Now, I really recommend um, that you either you know go and explore other um, chess uh, tactics websites, um, and there's lots online. If you just uh, type in chess tactics, there are there are, are lots of websites that do these. But also uh, good good chess tactic books like there's a book 101 chess tactics for example um, to work your way through and I try I personally I try and do about 20 to, to 50 chess puzzles per day um, I always do some over breakfast um, and and it's doing these chess puzzles which really sharpens and improves uh, my chess playing so um, so get into them get think get find a good place to find some chess puzzles and get puzzling but as I said I'm going to put some uh, on the one note. Uh, for you to get cracking with. So that's enough chess for today. So we've had a look at the Spanish opening and the Italian opening. Hopefully in your mind you can picture them already, but practice them on the board. We've had a look at a little bit of endgame theory about how if you are have got a king and a pawn, get your king in front of the pawn as you progress up the board, and that will uh, be a way to convert it to a queen and victory. And then to develop your middle game, do loads of puzzles. Um, and next week we'll learn some openings for black. We will um, have a look at some more um, end game theory, um, focusing on on uh, the idea of opposition with the with the kings, which uh, which will help us get our pawns into queens. And we shall have a look at some strategic ideas. And of course, I'll set you some more puzzles too. Okay, I'll see you next week.